Lady, someone was asking about uh, if they should be leaving their windows open after Maghrib. Is it related to energy or something or? Yeah, it, it, it's best not to. It's, you have the taweezes on the window and, and should you leave your windows open after Maghrib, it, it's probably best not to unless you can put the shades and the windows open for air. If you really need the air and it's hot then no problem. You know Allah, you say, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. But uh, from, from energy practices we know that yeah, the, the just it can cause a little bit of difficulty. But the main thing is that the taweez has a protection and a light that you sort of sanctify the presence and, and the premises. And the reason for shedding the blinds and the shades is that these creatures from a distance can cast themselves into a location if they can see through. When they can see through the window from a distance they can cast themselves into that location and begin their fitna difficulty and whatever type of difficulty they want to place. That's why then in traditional Muslim homes by Makrib time there's blackout, you know everything shades, wooden shades, everything was all closed out so that nothing from outside could look inside even, inshaAllah. Mm. Um, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi um, Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What if we keep covering our head but occasionally we take photo being uncovered head? Is it okay or will it affect our energy unless we delete that picture? What if we, what if we cover our head and then we, we take photos with our head uncovered and would that affect our energy? Yes. Yeah, the, the concept of the covering of the head is a, is a hijab is a, is, a, is a protection and it's a protection that seals the energy on the body from many unseen and it's important for the men and women to cover their head. Men because he's the imam and he's trying to build his energy and these creatures that come they take from the crown of the head, the soft t tissue where the baby when he's born has a softness. The soul has a place of leaving from the head, from the toe and from the belly button. And this energy of the soul, this shayateen they want to take from the head. So when the man has no head cover they're sitting on top of him and just trying to pull his head and pull his energy from his head. And that's why to seal energy and that's the one who works on energy to build his energy, he spends all his effort on building energy then he wouldn't try to have it wasted where it just goes without uh, any, any, any effort and then they get itching and, and something is, they can feel something is just you know eating on their head like a crow that just sort of picking on the person's head. So the covering of the head is like the pyramid that the whole system of energy that you're building, the, the power of the sunnah is the insulation of this energy that is being produced and meditating and bringing in and you want the energy to, to build and to build and to build until this energy become a himma, become a force, become a, a constant light of energy that Allah converted into faith. And that the power of that person's heart becomes stronger and stronger and stronger because of their practices. So it has immense, immense power. So when we see imam without a head cover then we know that that's not a, that's not a proper understanding and that's not something good. And uh, if they're in their position of being imam and they're trying to even teach without a head covering that's a different madhab, that's a Salafi, Wahhabi, not even Salaf astaghfirullah because Salaf is solid that the purified Sahabi beyond even comparison. That's complete Ahlus Sunnah, these people make these names uh, but these are Wahhabi beliefs and they don't adhere to the Sunnah nor do they find any importance in the majestic Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad just on an energy level, we, if we understood what was eating our head, the power of that sunnah is immense at the level of loving Prophet and magnifying the majestic sunnah. That anytime you revive a sunnah you have like a ajr of 70 martyrs 
that in last days Allah, why the, the nation of the last days would be so blessed? Because everything would be dropped and when Allah sees that there's a servant trying to revive a sunnah and say, I'm going to keep it like a flag, more and more people are dropping it, I want to keep it, then Allah give them the reward of 70 month years and everything they do. That's not this even can be imagined even people died for one martyr for themselves to be martyred. Imagine being being dressed by the, the rewards of 70 martyrs for reviving a sunnah. So anyone who goes around with the hat and people say, what's that? Say, this is the majestic sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad When they see your ring and say, what's that? They say, oh see it's all forgotten. This is the majestic sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad When they see you have a siwok in your pocket. Uh, you go to the mosque and these, 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 these madhab people, these would say, oh what's this, you don't, you can use toothbrush and say, oh, get it, I don't want to give you a talk right now but you've lost it completely. This is a majestic sunnah. This, this little stick here has the power to open your heart and all your latayabs. If you used with understanding and, and the majesty of Prophet that everything Prophet brought for us has an immense, immense reality. And that we, we ask everything that we do to be under the nazar, nazar of the king, the king of all creation, that he be happy with us and his gaze be upon us always. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If we showed impatient behavior or bad behavior, will it cut our connection? And if we realized our mistake later, will it mend our relationship with shaykh and Rasulullah Rasool, if, if we show impatient behavior, would it cut our relationship with, with the, the shaykh? And if we return ourselves back to patience, would it uh, mend the connection with the shaykhs? Yes, it, it's, not, it's not so simple to damage the connection with the shiuks. These are the character defects. Again when somebody is beginning the path they, they think it's easy. So that uh, I'm going to be patient and, oh my gosh I made a boo-boo, I'm not patient today, I, I yelled at somebody, what's going to happen? No, that's given. The shaykhs know that you're not going to pass this for a long time. And uh, as soon as you think you're going to pass it, they're going to sort of turn up the heat. So there is no success. Success is only with Allah So don't, don't think you're getting through this test, it doesn't work that way. And that's usually the beginners think, I'm going to pass the patience, oh my god I didn't, I wasn't patient yesterday. No you're not going to be patient. And as soon as you think you are patient, the test will be increased and increased and increased. That the, what Allah wants is something of an unimaginable level of patience. You know the shaykh knows because of how he's been tested with patience that he couldn't have never imagined those events in his life that would cause him to, to be patient for. And it wasn't the entry level patience uh, that, that somebody barked at you and you didn't reply back. Those are just the practices for you to practice yourself, keep making istiqam, keep making istighfar, keep, keep sort of balancing your energy, keep meditating showing that why are you so reactive, why, why do you have to make a comment, why, why don't you put something in your mouth when you know that your, your mouth is a, is a problem. And uh, you use all these tools because it's about to get harder and harder and harder. So don't worry, just keep going, keep going and know that uh, there's no passing these tests. They just get harder and harder and harder and Allah wants just to see istiqam and your firmness, that you be firmly committed to the next test and to the next test and to the next test. And that you try to do better, try to do better. That's why these people are making everything oversimplified. That did, did for example the, the, the email that, okay, if Laylatul Raqayb is coming in Thursday night, I didn't do everything, should I do everything before the Maghrib? What if I don't do everything for the Maghrib? Should I do these 10 things at this time? Should I do these things at Asr time? How, how many times do I recite this? How many recite? 
yeah, you're still in the mindset that you, you're going to accomplish something with these practices and that you recite something and the, the magic door is open for you from the heavens and none of that's going to happen like that. That's not the purpose of these practices. These practices are to be done with good intention, with intention of love and that to know that nothing you do will lift you. This is all a lifting from the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad And then when Prophet give the isharat then these awliyaullah they lift the servant up just because the fact that they are sincerely sitting and doing. Now they did it exactly at that time, they overflowed from Asr to Maghrib, do you really think that matters? Do you think that you know this something was going to come and, and finish and you, you missed it? No, the servant is sincere, they're sitting and reciting, they're doing what they're supposed to. Then the nazar of Prophet sees that with sincerity they're sitting and trying, that nazar is enough to dress their soul for all of eternity. And if isharat come that Prophet is happy and the command come to these awliyaullah then again those awliya send their nazar upon the servant and they feel, they feel a fires beginning to dress them as they enter into more and more sincerity because they're sitting sincere and their sincerity is based on, Ya Rabbi I'm not able to do these things. I can't even recite with the tongue that you want me to. And we sit and you sit and you cry and do them and you know you're doing them incomplete. And that you can't do them like everybody else can do them. And say, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm just doing this to show my love for Prophet that safeguard what my practices are and they sit and they sit and they do and they do from an ocean of sincerity. And they never thought they can complete it and they never thought what they recited was of any value. Everything that they were doing was to show themselves that I'm nothing, I'm nothing out of me but I'm trying my best to do these things. Forgive me, send me an angel that will perfect my recitations and my counts and all that I'm doing. And they do it out of love, and they do it out of, out of their sincerity of the heart to get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why all these awliyaullah write in all of their futuhats, they're not relying on the student for anything. Just have a good heart, show up and do your practices and with sincerity and know that anything you do is not going to be impressing, impressive to Allah But you do it because of your sincerity and your love and then leave the rest for the nazar and the gaze of Prophet to dress the servant and uplift the servant take every difficulty away from the servant. And when they reach towards that level in Allah if Allah finds satisfaction in how they, they, they command and hold themselves, that's why we're giving you this dialogue. When Allah's happy, Inayatullah comes, when Allah hears that the servant is, is admitting their weakness, Ya Rabbi can't even recite these, these things like correctly. I can do all these things, I'm not able to finish all these things, I'm doing them Ya Rabbi. They say, say nothing dearer to Allah that the servant reads Qur'an late at night with a candle, not to wake anyone, not to disturb anyone. When these sincere actions and the sincere approach of the servant in all these holy nights and all these awrad and all these zikrs and ayatullah comes. If Allah comes it's like an angel, a ruhsiba, an angel comes and dress the servant and actually lift them to the other side of akhirah into the oceans of, of realities. And that dress dresses the servant, blesses the servant and it's an experience for them that they're waiting for Inayatullah. They're waiting for Allah's ridha and satisfaction to dress them. So they don't do it thinking that you know the, the exactly at mark of time something going to dress them, something going to, to exactly this amount to count, this amount to count. They try to be as accurate as possible but they negate themselves at the same time. So it's important to be nothing, to remind yourself of your nothingness 
And of course you're not going to accomplish anything. You're doing this because you're doing it out of love, not that you're getting anywhere otherwise the person will become arrogant. Do you know how much I've recited in the last week? Do you know how much I've done this? And then there'll be an arrogance that grows within the servant, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi As uh, Since sometimes I've been feeling a very heaviness in the head and not being able to do any work freely and feeling mentally tired, what should we do? Any du'as? Lately I've been feeling a heaviness in the head and mentally not able to do anything, any du'as? Alhamdulillah, oh, all the du'as on the app the salawats, the, all the du'as from the app, that, that's enough. No one ever has to ask for what du'as to do or what salawats to recite. The app has everything. So anytime you're not feeling good, anytime you're, you're, you feel some sort of an energy, you immediately open the app, you go to the du'as and start reciting the du'as. You get through all of them, you can go du'a mandur, these are the du'as of the Sultan of Awliya. And by mimicking them, by looking at his face, reciting that du'a that from your intention, not mine, that uh, look at the face of Sultan al awliya Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan al Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani say, from your intention, not mine, I don't know what these du'as are. And I'm going to just re recite imitating you, the du'as are all there. And then the salawat same, is continuously reciting all these salawats that are on the app. And then always try to build your energy. Always know that anytime we live in a, a negative world and a world filled with negativity, as soon as you want to do a positive action of course you're going to feel all sorts of headaches, you're going to feel every type of heaviness, you're going to feel like the whole world came against you not to say another word, not to recite another word and that's, that's when you know it's true. That the immensity of negativity is everywhere and they want to stop people from praying, stop people from reciting, stop from any type of activity because that activity burns all this negative world. So that's, a, that's what Prophet described the greatest jihad, that's why it is an immense fight. It's a fight for the servant to keep their faith and keeping faith like a hot fire in their hands. Because the faith of keeping the sunnah, keeping the way, what did Prophet mean by that? That you know keeping your faith in the last days would be like you know fire in your hand. That's what we started with because the, the women and children don't want to do these practices, don't want you to go and sit even to listen on how to do these practices. The person can't even sit to do the practices, can't recite any of these practices because this is the struggle when the demons are everywhere. They're not letting anyone to do anything. Then the demon convinces you, take your hijab off, take your hat off, take all these things off, join us and then the party of fire. So it's not something easy and as this world goes into a more and more difficult phase then it becomes even more and more of a, of a difficult nature. But the, the khatams, the zikrs, the majlis of Sallallahu Alaihi Nabi Sallallahu have an immense power. So by just checking in, watching the live broadcast, even the rebroadcast when you wake up in different time zones has immense cleansing. Just listen to the salawats, let the sound come into the home to cleanse the home, cleanse the environment, everything. So it has immense, immense powers against this negativity. While the salawats are going off, try to… you can do your, your, your awrad at that time if you're having a difficult time doing your awrad, when they're doing the nasheeds start doing your awrad in your home because the energy that's coming in from these salawats pushes away many things from the home. That's the time in which then you can probably sit and start doing your awrad, make your connection, connect your heart, do your muraqabah, connect the heart with the shaykh, see ourselves at Rosa Sharif in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad always and to be dressed by these lights and blessed by these lights inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how to make madad in any situation? What do you mean how to? When to or how to? How? We, we, we've gone to how to make madad. Yeah. 
there's a whole section on the madad, how to make madad in any situation. I think you, you asked that the night before on when to make madad in every situation. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, anytime you want to make madad just imagine with all your faith the shaykh is coming, is that an appropriate place to make madad and the shaykh to appear at that time? If it's not appropriate then you know, you don't do it at that time and how you're dressed and how you're c- conducting yourself, it's a part of your faith. Then Allah will look and say, this person doesn't really have faith, look they're doing madad inappropriately dressed, inappropriate location. So as much as you believe it and you conduct yourself accordingly, as, as much as Allah makes it real, makes it more and more powerful. And then there's the short madad of just immediately connecting your heart and asking for the shaykh to be present when you feel danger and difficulty or you know if you're doing a, a test at school and something's happening. So that can be done immediate just as once you've trained yourself you just madad, madad that see through my eyes, come through me and you make a short madad for an emergency so that their fires reach to you and that their, their lights and, and guidance come to you. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Thank you for your guidance Sayyidi. Uh, should one worry if they don't feel tested or see any difficulties in their life and their only struggle is improving their practices? Alhamdulillah. Go around with a… If, if, I, if a person doesn't have any difficulties or any struggles in their life, should they what? What should they do? Uh, should one worry if they don't feel tested? Should one worry if they don't have any struggles or any difficulties in their life, all the only problem is, is on how to do more. No alhamdulillah is Allah, Allah, Allah's grace. You're, you're, you're doing good if, if that's how you feel then alhamdulillah just do more, do more, do more and, and uh, if a door is open for you to do more then do as much as you can with that grace and, and that, that emanation. And uh, always best to prepare on sunny days for a cloudy day that may be coming. So somebody says, why do we have to prepare for the last days when you know the Walmart is open and nice beautiful sunny days? And well preparation wasn't for that, preparation for was a day when there is no Walmart. So the wise one is the one who prepares today when the days are good for a day of badness that's coming. So it's always good to be prepared, you know, put your zikrs aside, put all your practices, do, do as much as you can when everything is good and build your himma, build your practices, build your connection. When you feel everything is great for a difficult day comes, it's impossible to learn at that time. You know, when everything is upside down and your world is, you know, flipping in different directions, you can't sit there and try to learn meditation. It's just not going to happen. So that's why this, this message reaches to people all over the world because they have time. You know there was a great opening last Ramadan and that's what the, the dunya world calls an awakening. But this is Allah who said that this is you know the might of that sickness is not something that can be understood. When an unseen sickness comes and it puts fear into the hearts of people that fear can only come from Allah His majestic might that He puts behind that, that you know every ship on earth stopped, every pump on earth stopped, every store on earth stopped, it's not normal. Allah's might was visible in that event and as a result believing people they felt the might of Allah not the fear of the incident. But they could feel Allah's majestic might in every zikr, Allah's haybah, dressing of everything. Neither fear nor grief came to them or comes to them but that they feel the power of Allah's like, uh, my kingdom comes, my will will be done on earth and they feel that. They feel Allah's will is, is immensely emanating on this earth. For nobody can shut this earth down with not a single bullet fired, just everybody ran into their rooms like little naughty children. And that was an immense opening. As soon as Allah sent everyone to the room then many of them inspired to log on, watch these people, learn this system. These are the times that you've been given, Prophet and described you'll be accountable for the time you've been given, the money you've been given, whatever Allah has given to you. Allah will ask you about it. 
So this one is about time, the time that people have been given to sit at home and do nothing. Well that time you could have built, building your heart, your connection and your understanding inshaAllah and that would have been time well spent. And many have and that's why the channel has so many people describing that. I, I tuned in last Ramadan, I started to watch and this completely different reality, different teachings and now I'm completely on a different course learning these teachings, inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam After deep meditation, sometimes we feel so uneasy in the head, whole day sometimes for many days as if the nerves are moving. What to do then? Yeah, I don't know if uh, under… sometimes under deep meditation I feel lots of nerves moving in my head, sometimes for many days. I don't know if you're doing our meditation, so I make sure that you're doing exactly the system that we've outlined because this meditation has nothing to do with the head. That this uh, muraqabah and the practices of muraqabah is to silence your head and tilt it in which you see nothing and that you're shutting off the faculty of your head and with the vision of faith that you see yourself in the presence of the shaykh and that the shaykh is right in front of you and that you're asking to connect with the shaykh and fill me with your light and fill me with your fires and then at that time you can just breathe and listen to salawats and asking that it just come to your heart, come to your heart. But other people and other concepts of meditation they go into their mind and work into their mind but this is nothing to do with the head, they want the head to be shut off. So you shouldn't feel anything in your head, your head should be void and you should be feeling in your heart and in your chest. And if in the meditations you start to make your connection and then the heart begins to palpitate because there's going to be a signal that begins to come into the heart, energies that come into the heart in which you feel like maybe you're having a heart attack because the heart is going to start to come alive, inshaAllah. Bas. InshaAllah ila sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ali sahabi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqat al-ashbandiyyat al-aliyya wa sayir wa saddatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.